Hello everybody. Hopefully you all are doing well. I'm going to do a little bit of a comparison video today. A while ago I released an initial impressions video on the Cold Steel Hudson Bay Tomahawk. And in the comments of most platforms that I upload to, the number one comparison that was requested was to the HMB Forge Medium Camphawk that I did a, a couple that I reviewed a couple years ago. So while this is not a direct comparison by size and weight, this is what people were actually asking for the most. So the Hudson Bay is 17.35 ounces. It has a six inch uh, wide head and the cutting surface on it is three and five eighths inches. The HMB is 12.65 ounces weight, just the heads. We're just talking about the head weights. Three and a quarter inch cutting surface and it's five and a half inches. So there is a size difference between these but I think the classic design of this maybe and I guess that's why people were interested. I did ask a couple people why they were suggesting that. There's other tomahawks and axes that are probably more size and weight compar compared, uh, comparable to this but in any case that's what people are asking for. First off this is not going to be a comprehensive review of each individual axe. This is just a general comparison and this is also um, I'm not trying to sell either one of these because I, I, I own both of these and I don't, you're not buying them from me, okay? These are just my experiences with them and we're going to do some work and just compare a little bit between the two how they perform, all right? This one is on a shorter handle and that's one of the benefits of the Tomahawk that I, that I enjoy is that you can put any length handle on there that you want or multiple handles. This one is on the standard 22 inch handle that comes with it. I do have a a bit longer, I think this is 19 inch handle that I'll be putting on the on my HB for this little comparison. Okay, so there we go, let's get into some work. We're just gonna do some basic stuff, a little bit of chopping. Uh, I don't think these are the best thing in the world for splitting, but we will do a little bit of splitting. And uh, we'll just do some brush work and you know, the things that you would do, or at least the things that I do while I'm out bumming around in the woods. So let's get to it. I right, just do a little limbing on this down tree with the HB. Should be no problem. Cuts pretty good. The cold steel. No problem. I will right, we'll do a little bit of chopping. And before I get started, I just want to say Yes, I know you should use a saw, and it's better, faster, whatever, to use a saw. But we're not reviewing a saw today. So, all right, just do a couple chops and... Wood's a little bit frozen. This guy does pretty good. All right, let's do the H and B. Remembering too that we're slightly shorter on handle. Oh, there's knots right there. You gotta place it. It's still in frame. Slightly lighter and smaller blade. Definitely can see that there's a bit of a difference. Still does pretty good. What we've got here is some a little bit more green wood. So if we were cleaning this up or tra doing a little trail clearing, see how this does. That thin bit really, really digs in. It's pretty short work. Have a green branch. Let's try the H and B. A little bit smaller diameter, but 
this is the way it is. It's what I've got to work with, right? So, a little shorter, a little lighter, a uh, little different angle. It is what it is. Let's try this next one down here. Not bad. Move down a little more. I definitely think that the cold steel has a slight advantage over the H and B for this kind of stuff. They can both definitely do the work though. All right, we're gonna do a little splitting. I wouldn't normally do a lot of splitting with this small of a of a tool, but it's still interesting to compare them. The H and B has a slightly shorter but wider bit. The cold steel, a little bit longer, much thinner. Start with the H and B. Just a small little round here. It's about the size of something I'd put in my hot tent stove. Let's see how she does. Not too bad. Pretty good. If we're gonna do up some kindling. Not very straight grain piece here. Not too bad. All right, let's try the cold steel. About the same diameter, same length, and it does just fine. Not very straight grained wood, but Plenty usable. All right, let's move on. All right, for a little fine detail work, I've got a little piece of uh, pitch wood here, and we'll see if we can get this lit up. I received some criticism in the past when doing things like this, and there's no real need for it. And but the the reality is. Uh, it's a test of can you do fine working with it with the handle on there or is it too cumbersome to be able to use to say light a fire and get some some small wood shavings okay so that's why we do it even with the 22 inch handle this thing's still perfectly usable and of course we can remove the head from the handle if we want to. Alright, everything's a little wet. Let's see how we do. So, even with the handle on there, it's still perfectly usable for doing a little bit of fine work. And of course we can take the head off. All right, we'll do a little fine work with the H and B. The blade on this is a little wider and the profile that I have on it is not as flat so it's not quite as good for carving 
I do use this quite a bit for splitting kindling, so I have a bit of a, a bit more of a convex edge on this. So it's not quite as good at carving, but it'll still do fine. So yeah, this is perfectly usable, both of them, very usable. And of course we could use the heads without the handle. If you're going to make tent stakes or toggles or rough out a spoon blank, all kinds of little things. A lot of people wonder why you'd want to do this or why this is a benefit. That's up to you to decide. If you're inside a tent, it might be handy to take the longer handle off. Alright, that's the H&B. Works quite very, very good. It's very, a very good size. Very comfortable to use. Okay, let's do the H &B, or the cold steel. Again, this could be for tent stakes or toggles. Or if you're carving a spoon or a spatula or just kindling. If you're sitting inside your tent and you don't have a lot of room for a for a handle to be waving around. It's a slightly larger head and the angles on it are not quite as comfortable. But they're very comparable, I think. All right, let's move on. You may notice the finish is worn off of the cold steel. That was done intentionally. This is the newer style. It has more of a, uh, it's not as much of the enamel paint style as before. But this was cleaned down. Like I said, I use these for sheath making. That's the only reason why that is that way. This is actually a really durable finish, I found. So. These two hawks are slightly different in design and they function a little different but I think they both can accomplish the same tasks. For me it comes down to personal choice, expectation, and budget. The H&B is a hand forged heirloom quality axe that brings a certain pride of ownership in owning and collecting. The Cold Steel Hudson Bay Tomahawk is a mass produced utility piece that may need some fine tuning to get to work properly. Sharpening, handle fitment, things of that sort, but we'll do the work just the same. Some will get great satisfaction in this transformation and work as well, and that's something to consider. All right, so we've done a little comparison between the two. I don't know how well that's going to help people make a decision, but I do quite often get the question, which one is better, X or Y? And most often I will answer back, um, the better question is, what are your expectations? What's your budget and what are your expectations? The work that you're going to, that you're going to perform will have the, should have the most significance on what tool you decide to buy, okay? Now in the case of these two, they're both fairly lightweight hawks and they're not big splitters and that sort of thing and they actually I think personally that they compare very well it the main difference between the two of these is price and maybe pride of ownership so that's normally the direction that I steer the conversation this I consider more of a everyday utility tool I don't mind if I chip the edge or, or use it for some grub work or something like that the H&B I consider more of a, it is a, a, a bit more expensive, but it is also handmade and there's a, a lot of pride of ownership. But pride of ownership does not necessarily mean that it is going to perform better, okay? So in any case, those are the choices you have to make for yourself. I can't make that for you. And uh, hopefully this video helped you out. Leave a comment, leave a suggestion. Constructive criticism is always welcome. That is how we learn. And... You can also check my content out on 
multiple other platforms. I'll try and leave a link down below. Uh, trying to spread out a little bit and, and that sort of thing. So until next time, get out there, enjoy the outdoors, stay safe, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.